First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk on the development of advanced silicon materials for lithium and potassium ion batteries. My name is Abdelftan Hamoud. I am a senior researcher at Green Mat Lab at the University of Liège. So first I will start by giving a few words our research activities at Green Mat Lab. Uh, here in our lab, we are mainly focusing on the study and the development of new powdered materials with controlled microstructure with switchable physical and chemical properties to enhance and facilitate their use in different applications. Indeed, in our lab, we are developing different powders with different uh, microstructure uh, properties. We are trying to tailor and control the microstructure in order to enhance the properties of this material. We are also interested in the development of new films or the coating of uh, these films. The common points between these powder and coatings is the uh, we are starting from suspension or solution. So we are spending time on the study uh, dispension to try to stabilize uh, the suspension and solution in order to enhance the properties of the final powder and coatings that we in our lab we are preparing powders for different applications including powder for food ceramic 3d printing material recycling material for energy material for health mining and metal material in this presentation, I will mainly focus on two topics. The one is material recycling and the second one is material for energy. Indeed, in this presentation, we are interested in the recycling of silicon from solar panels as ion materials for lithium ion batteries and potassium ion batteries. So we are interested on the recycling of this um, photovoltaic uh, models because they are used in the market since several years and it has as any other device cycle life which comes from production and the use and at the end of the life we need to collect them and to recycle them in order to extract the metals that are contained in these devices uh, one of the main metals which we need to recycle is silicon because in um, the average mass of the uh, photovoltaic cell is 18 kilograms, which contain 72 cells, and these cells contain almost 5% of silicon. And uh, in the market, uh, we have different uh, silicon powders, and the price of these silicon powders depends mainly on the purity and the, the particle size, as we can see in the following uh, table. And the main advantage of the recycling of these photovoltaic panels is the silicon that is contained in these photovoltaic cells has at minimum purity of 19.99%, which is very high compared to the uh, silicon available in the market. And also we can use it in different applications. But in our field, we are interested to recycle the silicon as negative electrode material for lithium ion batteries and uh, potassium ion batteries. For example, for lithium ion batteries, silicon has the highest uh, gravimetric and volumetric capacity compared to other metals, including tin, phosphorus, antimony, and uh, germanium, for example. Also, the silicon has very low price it's not at all toxic and it shows very high safety compared to maybe other metals like antimony for example so for for this interesting properties of silicon indeed the recycling of silicon from solar panels as anod materials for lithium ion batteries uh, has many uh, advantages and reasons because silicon, as I mentioned, has high capacity and also the recycling of this photovoltaic allow us to extract other valuable metals like aluminium and silver. Also, the silicon that is extracted from these photovoltaic panels uh, has high purity 
and also if we decrease its particle size to nanometric size we can increase its price however the successful use of the silicon as an material for lithium ion batteries with good electrochemical performances face different technological challenges related to mainly high volume expansion during the lithium uh, reaction with silicon during charge and discharge processes in this case we'll have the polarization of the silicon particles and also the delamination after many cycles which will lead to the loss of contact between active material particles Another big challenge that we have to uh, face and also to solve is the unstable solid electrolyte interface layer, which leads to, to continuous consumption of lithium, which will lead at, at the end to the loss of capacity. So our strategy in this work in order to buffer the volume expansion during cycling of silicon is first to leach the silicon wafers in order to extract pure silicon and then to decrease the particle size of the silicon particles and at the end to spread dry silicon with different carbon sources as it's showing in this uh, slide. At the end, we have to make the Turman treatment in order to form the conductive carbon and in order to ensure that our silicon carbon has good electrochemical performances, we have to make different electrochemical characterization. In order to extract pure silicon from solar panels, we had to make the leaching first on the potassium hydroxide to dissolve aluminium and do in nitrite acid in order to dissolve silver. As it's shown by our XRG measurements before and after leaching, we can see that before leaching we have mixture between silicon, aluminium and silver. And after leaching, we can see that we have pure silicon. The ICP measurements confirm that, that after leaching, we have very high pure silicon particles that can be used as an material for lithium ion. Then we make the uh, ball meaning in organic solvent. Why use the organic solvent in order to avoid the oxidation of silicon in water? And we can see that the continuous ball meaning of the silicon particles that are extracted from solar panel leads to a decrease of the particle size from one micrometer to almost 100 nanometer. So we successfully decreased the particle size of the silicon. As it's well known for electrode materials in lithium ion batteries, the performance of the battery depends mainly to the composition, structure, and size of the electrode materials that are forming our batteries. For the to use spread drying method in order to prepare the silicon carbon composite. For that, we spread dry suspension that is containing our silicon that is extracted from solar panel with polymer PVP with carbon nanotubes. And then, after the spread drying of this uh, suspension, we collected uh, powder with different particle size. Then we make the heat treatments. At the end, we form this nice spherical particles in which silicon is uh, connected by carbon nanotubes and also it's surrounded by conductive carbon from the PVP. And then we make the electrochemical uh, measurements of this silicon for lithium ion batteries. We make uh, two different uh, measurements. The first one, without uh, limitation of the capacity, we can see that we have very good uh, reversibility of the charge and discharge processes. At C over 20, we have almost the theoretical capacity of the silicon. And when we go to C over 5, we, ha we still have very good cyclability with very high capacity of almost 2000, which is almost five times the capacity of the carbon graphite which is used in the commercial lithium-ion batteries. 
Then we make the capacity limitation to 1200 mAh per hour program. We can see that we still have very good cyclability that in charge and discharge processes. And we have very good cyclability with almost 100% of the capacity retention at 1C. But what is surprising in this case is even when we go from C over 20 to 1C to 2C, the capacity doesn't decay and we still have very good ray capability performances of our uh, silicon carbon composite anode material for lithium ion batteries. Thanks to this very good electrochemical performances of the silicon carbon composite, we decided also to make the measurements and to use this silicon carbon composite as anode material for potassium ion batteries. And we can see that we have almost the theoretical capacity because the theoretical capacity of silicon in uh, potassium ion batteries is uh, less than 1000 mA per hour per gram because we have only one potassium that react with silicon. And here we still have very good cyclability and good uh, capacity at C over 20. We have decay for the capacity at C over 5, which can be uh, related to high volume expansion to the high volume of potassium. But after coming back to C over 20, we recover the initial capacity. We make the test in two different electrolytes. We still have very good capacity in these two electrolytes. As a conclusion of this work, we uh, showed the successful use of the recycled silicon from photovoltaic cells. We developed fast uh, size reduction procedure that allowed us to obtain nanomicron size silicon. We showed that it's possible to prepare large batch of materials there in size reduction processes in organic solvent. And we uh, showed that the using of the spray drying method allows us to prepare uh, very homogeneous particles of silicon and uh, conductive carbon that allows us to obtain excellent electrochemical performances of uh, this composite as anode material at high current densities with very long cycling uh, duration. At the end, I would like to thank my colleagues from Green Matlab and I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.